Due to their primitive nature, the Lakaru were rarely seen throughout the galaxy. In fact, so primordial was their existence that they failed to develop hyperdrive technology. Despite this, their homeworld, Lakar, became a hotspot for interstellar trade during the Clone Wars. Pharmaceutical companies such as Chiwab, Marisi Prime, and Fabrath Medical all established major research facilities across Lakar. Unfortunately, their drive for the planet's valuable organic compounds drove the Lakaru deeper into the lush jungle environment. The situation only worsened with the rise of the Galactic Empire, as demand for medicine increased substantially, resulting in a full-scale seizure and occupation of Lakar. However, the organic resources were also targeted by the Rebel Alliance, specifically a unit of their special forces who infiltrated the planet in a bid to steal medical supplies. The mission was a success thanks to Biston. The 22-year-old Lakaru used well-thrown rocks and spears to fight off Imperial pursuers. This act of ferocity and tenacity impressed the Spec Force commandos so much that they offered him to join their fight. Biston eagerly accepted. Despite facing an entire galaxy unlike his homeworld, Biston was quick to master modern technology. Moreover, driven by adrenaline, he came to relish combat and truly felt alive behind the repetitive recoil of an M45 ion blaster. Biston's never-ending supply of energy made him a popular figure among the Alliance's soldiers, though his personal file listed multiple incidences of insubordination. More often than not, the Lakaru was spotted directing covering fire from the main entry hatch of a U-Wing fighter during flight and landing operations. His ability to pour such accurate and deadly streams of anti-personnel fire dated back to his days on Lakar. Having evolved in jungle canopies, Biston and others developed exceptional spatial awareness, keen eyesight, accurate depth perception, and quick reflexes. More importantly, however, the Lakaru were very sure-footed beings. As a result, Biston utilized minimal restraining equipment while standing on the edge of U-Wing fighters. All of these traits combined made the young warrior a top sharpshooter. In fact, due to his incredible skill and ferocity, Biston was selected to participate in the Battle of Scarif, despite having only joined the Rebel Alliance six months prior. Taking a closer look at his equipment and clothing, Biston donned a battered old spacesuit, a modified DH-17 blaster rifle, a principal life support umbilical port, a liquid cooling and ventilation port, a reinforced helmet ceiling ring, and sensitive brow tufts to aid in spatial awareness. Now it's time for this week's question. Do you wish to have seen more of Biston in Rogue One, a Star Wars story? Let us know in the comments below. Also, to have your say in future Rogue One lore videos, head on over to thecankrazons.com and get voting. Thanks for watching, and for more Star Wars related content, keep it locked here to the Cankrazons! Intrigued by his focus and passion for science, Lyra gladly served as Galen's guide for the next six months. Unfortunately, their expedition failed to uncover any kyber crystals. However, it did prove fruitful in one major regard. Lyra and Galen departed Espinar as a couple and were married only one year later.